Tonight on PR Rescue, scorching sand creates havoc for the lifeguards. A 111 call sparks a search for a status one patient. And a surf school loses a pupil in the Lion Rock Rip. It's a spectacular day at Pihar Beach, and at just over 30 degrees, the heat is on. And holidaymakers are out in force, employing a range of different tactics to battle the scorching sand. On the face of it, lifeguard Tom is a strong supporter of the SunSense message, but his slip, slop and slap is a bit sloppy. My uh, danger senses were tingling and I thought something's going to happen, so I may as well lather up now so I don't get burnt during it. Smart. And um, yeah. <laughs> Tom's prediction of a warm front moving through is bang on, with this guy turning up at the medical room. Right now I'm, I'm nice, and, nice and safe and not getting skin cancer while all these other are slowly dying. Guarding the beach today is F Patrol, led by Anna, one of Pihar's veteran lifeguards with over 20 years experience, assisted by her trusty sidekick, old Tingly Tom. Apparently the next few hours from what the guards have said from the last few days is it's going to be um, pretty horrendous with the way that the water starts flowing out. So, busy afternoon. But it's not only the current that will keep the lifeguards busy today. At over 50 degrees, the blistering sand is forcing creative solutions, occasionally at the expense of one's dignity. The first victim of the sand has just arrived at the medical room, hobbling in serious pain. The decision not to wear shoes while accompanying her daughter to the bathroom has resulted in terrible blisters on the soles of the woman's feet. First aid is required and cooling packs are immediately applied. So I was sprinted up the sand and I got halfway up and thought, no, my feet are really burning, this is not good. And she was running quicker than I and I stopped. These two ladies said, I'll lend you my jandals. So they lent us both a pair of jandals. We raced up to the loo and then I came back and I thought, no, they're blistered. Sure enough, they're all blistered. The burns are extensive, and senior medical officer Jonathan is called to the scene. The lady's trip to Piha will be cut short. Um, I'll just put it down to a &E. uh, we would call it a um, superficial burn. So they tend, they tend now to uh, talk about burns as being um, partial thickness or full thickness. Uh, so this is a this is a partial thickness uh, burn. Uh, it tends to be be more painful of the burns because. Um, it's right where the nerve endings are, whereas the full thickness burns go all the way down and basically they burn through the nerves. And it looks like Dad's holiday is over now too. No, my husband's on cooking duty now. You guys right? Yep. So I'm just going to sit down with my feet up. Yeah, I burnt my feet myself, but it's um, the sand is extremely hot and people come here without jandals and they burn their feet. So it's one of those things. I don't even think it's even jandals anymore. I think you need shoes. It is so yeah. hot. Lifeguards race to yet another podiatric emergency down on the beach. A young girl has skidded off her skimboard and has a nasty sprain. The pain is excruciating. The guards know there is little that can be done for a sprain apart from ice, elevation, compression and rest. The girl is transported to the medical room for just that, as well as a break from the intense heat. With the situation under control, Anna spots an unexpected ambulance in the car park. Someone has called 111. Reports are that a woman has been in a serious accident at the southern end of Piha, a kilometre south of the flags at the Blue Pools. It's a remote and dangerous area, with jagged rocks, a steep cliff face, huge waves and strong currents. We had the ambulance just turn up and they've had a ring through that there is, um, it's, they're a little bit unsure, either a status one or a status two victim. Lifeguards will have to make do with limited information. Mike paid a ring ambulance control, we're sending a response over now and um, then we'll give you an update over. We haven't heard anything, but yeah, an ambulance has just turned up saying that they've got a status one patient in the, in the pool by the keyhole. So nothing's come through our rescue network, but we don't really know what's going on. Um, the guards may have been given a few details about the exact nature of the woman's injuries, but given her status, 
they know exactly how serious this is. Status two means the situation is extreme. Status one, critical. There is a real and immediate threat to the woman's life. With little more than this information to go on, the guards have to prepare for every possible event, hauling a stretcher, a defibrillator, an oxygen cylinder, gas pain relief, and a medical kit into the IRB. You got me, to make the assessment. They also take Anna, the most experienced lifeguard and medic on the beach. To make the assessment. Okay. No, I might need you to come back. Or we're going to be calling Westpac. The information varies from our status one. For the injured woman, the guard's preparation and speed could be the difference between life or death. Piha receiving over. Lifeguard Emma takes control of the communication between Surfcom and Piha. Surfcom opening contact ambulance control. Um, at this point, uh, there's no point of that event. Status 1 or uh, uh -huh. status. Um, is there enough information for you to locate with the station first over? The woman's exact location is unknown. Club Captain Tony directs another set of eyes to the Tasman lookout. Take it out, mate. Just go down the bottom of Tasman and run up to the Tasman lookout, see if you can see anything. While the IRB races to the Blue Pool, ambulance paramedic Ari is on standby. Yeah, they're look overlooking the Blue Pool at the moment, so we're the gentleman standing up, up there. We need uh, more information on the location of the patient. Uh, they understand she is at the Blue Pool, uh, but we're a man is standing on the cliff top. Could this be where the status two victim is located? A junior lifeguard races to the Tasman lookout where he will have a clear view over the blue pools. Anna and the crew have seen the man in blue. He is their only indication of where the woman might be, and it's not easy access. Because we're not going to take her down a rock face. The other option is um, Westpac. One lifeguard sprints to the top of the Tasman lookout. This may be the only place for the guards to confirm the location of the seriously injured patient. Time is critical. The gear is weighing the guards down, and with a steep cliff face, loose rocks and bare feet, the climb is extremely difficult. And they're still not sure if the patient is even at the top. A member of the public who saw the lady in distress has an immediate request for her patient. Pain relief. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's at right angles. Don't look. Don't what, what is it? But the guards need to look and are greeted with a badly deformed, swollen and shattered ankle. It's a serious injury requiring urgent medical attention. And his diagnosis is no different. Oh, it's a good deformity. So I'm just going to ring through. I'm just going to give them the information where you are and um, what it looks like to me. Piha Dick, Piha Dick from Piha Mobile Over. Piha Dick receiving, Emma. Yeah, we're going to need West Pack. Um, we're located on the left above the blue pool. If you look over with the binoculars, you'll see me waving to you from where I where we're located. Over, can you see me? Copy that. We can see you over. Um, should we give the go ahead to first call of the exact location? Over. Yeah, we're going to need um, Westpac. Her ankle is an extreme deformity, and. The only way we could get her out of here is by doing some pretty hellish um, stretcher lifting over. Could we please have a confirmation of a status over? She's responsive, conscious and talking. Over. Meanwhile, the lifeguards provide patient Margaret with nitrous oxide. It's the only pain relief that they are permitted to administer. The nitrous isn't strong, but it takes the edge off the intense pain. Fortunately, her husband is by her side. We just come down here, we are going to have a bit of a dip on the blue pool and uh, just, just come down, so she must have just got on one of those loose rocks, you know, and sat down on the backside. And we can chill up here. I said, are you OK? She's got on my ankle, mate, is it? This is, about, this is about the first holiday she's had for about 10 years, though, so it's got to be <laughs> So anyway, it looks like I'm going to be doing the vacuum cleaning for another few weeks, eh? Hey? The only thing the guards can do for now is wait for Westpac helicopter. 
Meanwhile, the surf is building significantly, and so are the deadly currents. By Lion Rock, a surf school is holding lessons dangerously close to the notorious rip. While some manage to get out of the rip themselves, one surfer is missing from the group. He has disappeared behind the rock face, out of sight of the lifeguards. According to reports, someone is struggling to keep the distressed surfer afloat. Lifeguard Dennis races to launch the IRB. 100 meters north, Yogi sprints to the scene to back up fellow guard Aaron in the water. Low tide makes the IRB launch tricky and valuable seconds are lost. Around Line Rock, the surfer, helped by a fellow surf school pupil, is in survival mode. swam out, reaches the surfer first and raises his hand. Now that his mate is secured, the fellow surfer tries to make his own way back to the shore. The current has dragged the surfer more than 100 meters away from the group of surfers, right around Lion Rock. With such a strong current here, any pickup in the IRB is extremely dangerous. One wrong move and the IRB can flip, smashing against the fierce face of the iconic rock. Suddenly, Aaron's tube rope becomes tangled in the motor and he is dragged behind the boat. Lifeguard Dennis skillfully releases the rope. Guard Yogi is hanging onto the guy's board, aiming to reunite the two back on dry land. Dennis still isn't sure if the other surfer needs a pickup. He seems to be fine. The rescued surfer is an Irish tourist, and though this little trip isn't exactly what he had planned, he certainly won't forget New Zealand in a hurry. Nor will he forget the fellow surfer that helped to save his life. Oh, he just started screaming. And then the guy pointed at me, started pointing at me to go get him, mate. I was like, no, go tell the lifeguards, I'll get towards him. A sensible decision by the young man. Any rescue close to Lion Rock is perilous, even for professionals. Not knowing if the lifeguards have been able to swim back themselves, Dennis heads back out. But on the other side of Lion Rock, Yogi and Aaron have made it to shore even managing to save the Irishman's board. Yeah, literally, I was just, just here, about 20 metres on the rocks, catching a few small waves, and within 20, 30 seconds, I was in a hole at the rocks, and looking up, one of the coaches saw me, and only for him would be in serious trouble. So, yeah, thanks to the Pihau lifeguards. With the drama on the beach under control, at the other end of Piha, Anna briefs Margaret's husband. Margaret's deformed ankle is causing her unbearable pain. She takes in as much nitrous oxide as she possibly can. Yeah, you don't want to carry on your car the Only 15 minutes after the initial call, Westpac Rescue arrives. The patient is shielded from the flying debris. The chopper hovers with uncertainty. It's not looking good for a landing on the ledge. With pain relief required urgently and no other way off the ledge, the pilots and the paramedics will have to figure out a solution, and fast. Another problem, a dog on the loose arrives on the scene. A moving obstacle is the last thing the chopper pilot needs. The pilot searches for a suitable landing spot without success. 
Instead, he carefully maneuvers the chopper down as close to the ledge as possible to drop off medic Barry Watkin. Barry will assess the patient while the helicopter moves a safe distance away to await further instruction. The wee moot knows the best place to be. Westpac lands safely on the beach below, and Barry gets his first look at Margaret's leg. One look at the deformed ankle, and Barry knows the only option they have is to winch her off the rocks. Margaret's recent hip operation means they will have to take extra care. Her legs will have to be securely bound together. No, no, just uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, real careful. Now, I want you to hold Barry reassures Margaret that they have a range of pain relief options in the chopper. Whatever she chooses, she needs it fast. The guards secure the binding. It's the most painful part of the most sensitive area, right on her ankle. Get that bottle out of the way. Get that bottle out of the way, guys. You guys carry on. Oh. It'll be right. Just keep sucking on that gas. Just keep sucking on that gas. Hard out. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Barry explains the working of the harness, while down the other end, lifeguards put the finishing touches on the bandages securing her legs. It's an awful end to Margaret's first holiday in 10 years. The wind created by the hovering helicopter will be tremendous at over 150 kilometers per hour. Yeah, in, re in respect to everything else, it's quite dangerous because we've got a hell of a lot of sort of loose rocks and stuff like that. Like the, the woman that's uh, holding her's got a couple of life jackets on and stuff just to make sure that we don't get any sort of rock into the head or anything like that. But it's not the safest area. I mean, it's right on the, the cliff edge of a, of a rock face, so. Paramedic Barry gives an all clear for the pickup. You just keep going, Margaret. Yeah, keep going on the gas, Margaret. Keep going. Okay, Margaret, when he comes so, in to lift you, though, we're going to need to take that gas off you, okay? Yeah. So make the most of it now. The ones that don't get thrown everywhere, man. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. You'll be right, Margaret. Just keep going on that gas. You'll be right. You'll be right. Keep going, keep going. That's it. So well. The prospect of being winched up by the helicopter is absolutely terrifying, but there is no other option. A brave Margaret inhales her last few lungful of gas before the lift. The pilot maneuvers into position. He will have to compensate immediately for any sudden wind gusts to avoid smashing the pair against the cliff face. The move will be excruciating for her. The distance she travels is less than 100 metres, but at 100 metres high over a cliff face and in extraordinary pain, it's a hellish journey. Thankfully, it's a textbook rescue. That was actually a pretty cool winch, so it just goes to show you how much you need a Westpac helicopter because we couldn't have got her out of here by a stretcher. She was in too much pain, her ankle was too deformed. So it was really good teamwork amongst the rescue organisation. And the brave member of the public who rushed to her aid. Now that Margaret is safely off the cliff, the medics can get her back in the air and off to Auckland Hospital. While her helper is glad, she trusted her instincts. Well, I looked up and I saw the, the husband putting a towel over her, and I just thought, oh, that's not right there because he was looking up and looking. Woman's intuition, eh? Yeah, woman's intuition's always right. And yeah. um, I just went up there with some water because I didn't have any. And yeah, that no, was wicked like helping somebody out. 
Margaret is safely off and on her way to immediate reconstructive surgery, followed by months of rehabilitation. And ambulance officer Ari departs without his passenger. Today's foot focus sees the day end as it began, with yet another victim of the burning Piha sand. <laughs> Warm on the sand without dandles. Yeah, it's a little bit like a blister as well. Next time on Piha Rescue. A desperate mayday call from Coast Guard Radio. Three lifeguards go missing. When they get a big set through the keyhole, then um, me swing through the keyhole. Yeah. Well, a diving expedition that goes terribly wrong. Two people in water, one breathing, one non-breathing. We're close to rocks, no way the other boats can get in to help them. <laughs>